In this video, we're going to go over developing your Python developer resume. So when you are ready to go out there into the marketplace and you're looking to get a job, right? You're looking to get a position out there. Uh, this lesson here is going to really show you how to position yourself accordingly, appropriately for what you're trying to accomplish in terms of putting down the right information in your resume so that you can really sell yourself to the marketplace to your potential employers right uh, because there's a certain way that you want to fill out your resume so that it's not just having a bunch of filler stuff right you want things that are going to really showcase your expertise your you know credibility your skill set and the things that you've been able to accomplish and the value that you're able to bring to an organization so let's go ahead and jump into the python developer resume lesson okay so Let's look at some of the key points here in writing a compelling Python developer resume. So focus on accomplishments and end results. What have you done? What is the value that you've been able to provide here? So a good example of this is increased XYZ by X percentage or improved efficiency by, you know, Y percent or was able to, you know, finish or complete or whatever that may be, right? This is how you really want to have the language set up in your particular resume. And you can see on the right hand side, you want to have something that is kind of modern, that is unique, that is showing, you know, your picture there, showing, you know, what your, you know, actual interests are outside of work so that you can show off your extracurricular activities, kind of your other interests outside of work, you know, showcasing where people can find you online, your social media, you know, presence there, when you can have, you know, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, you know, Facebook on there, that's really going to separate you from your competition there. And then not only that, another thing that you want to do is you want to be able to look at what personal contributions that led to a specific successful completion of a project. So what did you do specifically that, you know, made the project better, that made it, you know, complete, you know, maybe faster than what they had initially thought or what single individual performance metric can you put on there a contribution that you're able to do, right? Because remember, it's all about results and it's all about performance. And, you know, the employers want to look at what has he done in the past? What accomplishments does he have? That leads me to believe that he's going to be a good fit here, right? So explain what technology stack that was used, any kind of languages, frameworks, right? Obviously, when you're starting out, you're going to be talking about just Python. However, if you are somebody who has experience in other languages, such as, you know, front end, HTML, CSS, and you're, you know, learning Python to learn more on the back end, then you're going to be able to put in, you know, various languages that you, you know, were using previously. And even if you, you know, have like HTML and CSS and you're applying for a Python job, and you're just going through this course, but you have the, you know, Python experience, then I would put that down, right? So just think about the more skills that you can put down, the more knowledge, uh, the better that you're going to be able to position yourself uh, as a, you know, Python developer that is, you know, the right person for the job, right? And then adaptability, really letting them know how you were able to adapt, you know, maybe on a project or on let's say something that you had to change or modify because in today's you know technology rich world we're always adapting we're always modifying adjusting if you're familiar with like the MVP term the minimum viable product where companies and especially tech companies they'll develop a product that they know has some bugs they know isn't the best but they're putting it out there knowing that but looking to get feedback from the marketplace so a lot of times what will happen is they'll put out something that is kind of subpar that they know is subpar, but they're looking to get that feedback. And then what will end up happening is they'll adapt either their approach or their strategy according to what the marketplace has, you know, said, right? So that's where the adaptability is huge, um, especially in a, you know, technology rich environment where you're working with, you know, different technologies, different dates, different, you know, uh, programming languages. You want to have the skill of adaptability and being able to showcase that in your resume uh, will definitely go a long way. And then the scale of projects, you want to list off, 
you know, number of customers, uh, requests per second. So essentially specific numbers here, right? The more specific, the better. And mention if you were responsible for any type of architecture or team management or whatever roles that may be, right? Getting specific, talking about results, uh, being able to showcase and let people know that you're adaptable and how you were able to adapt, right? And if you have any prior language experience with, you know, CSS, any kind of front end type of language will really help out because for the most part, if you're taking this kind of course here, you may have some experience with coding or programming. Perhaps you've, you know, developed websites on the front end side and now you want to get, you know, some experience on the back end. So being able to showcase your experience, your performance, your results is really what's going to separate yourself from the competition. So that's going to be here for the Python developer resume and we'll see you on the next one.